Hi guys, welcome to another Zero to 60. This one isn't really tech tips, it is more of a review, uh, but I thought I'd just share with the world a lovely, I say lovely, it was a cheap 10 inch um, rear view display, DVR, dash cam, China special thing. Uh, long story short, how I come onto this, when we were in America last year, we were in a Escalade for the holiday and it had a full screen rear view mirror, which I thought was really cool. So I did what you do, I got online to see if they were available aftermarket, and the Chinese are already well onto it. These mirrors, which I'll show you in two seconds, they are so cheap, they're just over a hundred Australian dollars. They're a forward facing dash cam and a rear dash cam, but the main reason I got it was for rear vision, for a well reverse parking really. And now I'll show you some of the features, I'm going to show you how it's been installed, and see what you think. Okay, so there's the mirror there. This is when it's actually powered off. I've just unplugged it um, for the video so you can see when it's off for us. Normally it will power up when the car's on. Um, but I just want to show you, it does work as a normal mirror. You can just see David over there. It does work as a normal mirror when there's no power. It is, it's like a tinted mirror. I don't know if you've anyone's ever seen one of the, um, the electronic tinting mirrors, but that's what it looks like. It looks like it's always tinted, which is fine at night time if you don't want to run the screen. And this is what it looks like as it powers up. And it just loads up its dash cam, so it is pretty quick to load. Now the default setting, and unfortunately it can't be changed, it always loads to split screen. So we've got the front cam on the left and then rear cam on the right. It does automatically start recording, which you can see the record flashing up there. So it starts working straight away as a dash cam. The main reason I bought it was for the rear vision. So I'll just switch it over to the rear vision now. Then you swipe it through, you get the front and then the rear. That is what you can see out the back. Now, I don't know if you could see before, but the rear vision out of these McGann's is terrible. And the main reason I wanted to get this was to try and have a better, better view of what was going on behind. In shopping centers, reverse parking like that, it's, it's crazy how difficult such a small car is. And with these cameras, it really opens up the field of view. Now that is just on normal DVR, so it's recording all the time. You can still swipe down so you can see right down on the ground. So if you are parking, you want to see how close you're getting, you can scroll right down. Or you can go up there, which is where I have it for the mirror setting. And I'll just switch it to the front, and the front is the same. Oh, it does do a split screen thing, which I haven't used, to be honest. Where are we? There's the front, and again, you can scroll down or up. It does, for the DVR function, it does record the entire frame, even though you don't see it on this display. And that's sort of what you see there. Now, it is getting a little bit dark outside, and what I have found that I've had to do at night time is actually change the brightness. And to do that, it's just that button there, and you can dim the mirror or brighten it right up. Um, being dark, I'll leave it on the darker setting. Now, there's one thing I don't like about this mirror is that it doesn't do that automatically. I really wish it did, but at the end of the day, it's not too bad just to flick that on when you get in the car at night time, just to dim it down. Okay, and I'll just run through the menus quickly. Although this is not the Android version, the menus are actually still relatively, well, I don't want to say complex, but you've got a few settings that you can play with. Most of it is in relation to the DVR, so you can set the volume for the beeping when you touch the screen. You can set the video resolution. This actually affects both the front and the rear cameras. Uh, I've just set it to the minimum resolution because I think it's sort of fine anyway, and you should, I've only got a small card in there at the moment. And I've got to get back. Uh, photo quality, it will take a photo at any time if you hit the photo button. It's obviously always set to loop recording, where are we? sorry, the loop recording. I've just got it on one minute sort of videos at the moment, which I think is fine for a DVR. Exposure compensation, I've just left it in the normal setting, uh, but you can obviously make it the camera sensitivity brighter or darker. It seems to work fine even at night. In fact, as we get to the end of the video, I will show you some night footage as well. Uh, actually, that night vision setting. Now this, I've got it on at the moment. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference. I will show you some pictures right now of night vision on and off. The biggest thing I can see is a difference. It stops the, it stops lights flaring so much, but that could just be a one-off. I can't really tell what it does. Another wicked Chinese feature. Motion detection is for when you leave the car parked. It will actually, if it senses motion, it will start recording. I haven't used that function at all. I have got it recording audio at the moment, 
the G sensor, again, that is something that should cause it to automatically start recording if it senses something when you've got the parking mode on. Language, self-explanatory. Now I leave the auto screen off, off. Uh, that's so that the screen stays on all the time because I am using it mainly as a mirror. Luminance setting, it's just the brightness of the screen. Uh, date and time, format the card, and I did actually use that to set the card up, it works fine. Restore factory settings, haven't used that, and the firmware is just the firmware it come with. Junsun do say they release firmware updates, but it's a bit of a, a case of, we'll believe it when we see it. And I'm just gonna go back before we walk around. But yeah, that's the normal mode there. And even during the day when there's a lot of reflections outside, the glare from the actual mirror part of it isn't too bad. What I found I've done, if I just offset the mirror a little bit, so not where it would be normally, I don't actually get any reflections from out the back of the car. And even on a bright day, this works quite well. All right, let's have a quick look at how the camera is mounted on the back. Now what I've done on the Megane, I've just mounted it just above the exhaust. And I've just double sided taped it for the moment just to see how it's going to fit. They do come with a bracket which I think a lot of people mount them up under the number plate but with that bracket it actually stuck out out from the back of the car which I didn't like. I wanted it to be flush and in. In that spot there as well what I have found it doesn't actually get too badly affected by water on, on a rainy day. Um, which I think if the camera is actually sticking out and the water is going to run down it would get on the lens. I don't know if it's because the exhaust is right there but there's no issues. That's where I've mounted it and it seems to work fine. And one other thing I just want to show you quickly which was a bit of a concern was the wires. I'm a bit of a OCD person when it comes to wiring installation. I've actually still got to finalize the power cord. I'm going to actually tuck that up underneath so it won't be visible to anyone um, but the wires that are at the top of the mirror now I saw pictures of these and other installations and I'll just put the light on so you can just sort of see at the top you've got those two one's actually a USB cord and one's the connection for the rear camera now unfortunately there's nothing I could do there's no way of hiding them because they are both right angle jacks that go into the top of the mirror uh, however to be honest once I got it installed and I stopped thinking about them you really don't notice them the mirror actually just clips straight on to the factory mirror and you can see the front camera sort of sticking out a little bit there. But I've got the two wires tucked into the factory cowl just at the top here and you really can't see them. They're all tucked away nice and invisibly and to be honest it almost feels a bit OEM. So guys that is a quick look at the Junsun, quality sounding name, the Junsun 910. Uh, and I've got to say, all in all, I've been pretty happy with it, especially for the money. My only complaint is that it won't go into automatically rear vision settings. You have to swipe once you power it up, once it powers up. But aside from that, it's been a really good mirror. It's been way better to drive with than I thought. And I can actually safely reverse park this car now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.